Just like not the type of person that you want to be around. He's very boring. Good afternoon. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. The men and women of the United States intelligence community and our armed forces dedicate their lives to protecting our nation and its people. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Adherence to the rule of law is a bedrock principle of the Department of Justice, and our nation's commitment to the rule of law sets an example for the world. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. Applying those laws, collecting facts, that's what determines the outcome of an investigation. Nothing more and nothing less. I told you he's fucking boring. The prosecutors in my office are a Bro, this motherfucker's name is Jack Smith. Like, uh, like this dude is just, he, he's like the type of dude, I don't know if he's Mormon or not, but he seems like the type of dude who just like lives and breathes like the, um, the ethics committee, like investigations that he conducted. You know what I mean? That's all he cares about is like, Following the fucking rules to a goddamn T. Among the most talented and experienced in the Department of Justice. They have investigated this case hewing to the highest ethical standards, and they will continue to do so as this case proceeds. It's very important for me to note that the defendants in this case must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. To that end, my office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. We very much look forward to presenting our case to a jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. I can't tell if he's Mormon, but it doesn't seem in like it. It doesn't seem like he's Mormon because he's, um, yeah, see? Yeah, okay, there you go. John L. Smith, or Jack Smith, is an American attorney who served in the United States Department of Justice, assistant United States attorney, acting United States attorney, and head of the department's public integrity section. He was also the chief prosecutor at the Kosovo Specialist Chambers, an international tribunal at The Hague, tasked with investigating and prosecuting war crimes in the Kosovo War. In November 2022... He, was, he became an independent special counsel responsible for overseeing two pre-existing DOJ criminal investigations into former President Donald Trump, um, uh, which include the January 6th attacks and mishandling of government records, including classified documents. But he's from uh, Syracuse. Went to Harvard. Um, immediately after law school, went to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. He's a member of the Sex Crimes and Domestic Violence Unit. Um, he was a competitive triathlete. He married Katie Shavigny, a documentary filmmaker known for becoming an award-winning 2020 documentary on Michelle Obama. They have a daughter. The couple has been living in the Netherlands. Since 2018. Wait, what the fuck? This man literally lives in the Netherlands? That's kind of fire. Why haven't they hit him with that? He worked at The Hague, I know. But why haven't they hit him with that? Like, oh, this guy's gay. He lives in Amsterdam where, you know, where he's making LGBT decisions. Like that type of shit. This guy likes dry. This guy likes riding bikes, folks. Isn't that gay? He's riding around in little bikes in Amsterdam. 
I call it Amsterdam. Some call it Amsterdam. Many people are saying Jack Smith, gay folks, he's where he's driving a tricycle wearing spandex. Big bike guy. Can we not give the bigots campaign ideas? Uh, hello, welcome to the Hostile Every Broadcast. This is like 90% of my commentary is like uh, doing a shitty Trump impersonation, uh, hoping that he will hear me and repeat the things that he, uh, his team hears on this broadcast. Okay. I would like to thank the dedicated public servants of the Federal Bureau of Investigation with whom my office is conducting this investigation and who work tirelessly every day upholding the rule of law in our country. I'm deeply proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Thank you very much. Why Florida, sir? Why did you decide? To That's hilarious. That's the only statement he gave and he just Counsel fucking Jack walked Smith, away. Uh, we knew he wasn't going to take questions even though... Uh... One eager reporter attempted there, speaking at the Justice Department, talking about the federal charges facing former President Donald Trump and one of his aides. The indictment released this afternoon. Trump, a Hassanabi head confirmed? I mean, yeah, confirmed. Facing Mr. Trump, including the willful retention of national defense information and obstruction of justice. Let's discuss uh, with uh, my panel. And, and Laura Coates, let me start with you. I, because, did, I did fucking uh, I nail the whole, like, Trump is the only type of person who would get arrested for... Like this, this uh, otherwise like petty violation. You know what I mean? Because he will openly state that he is doing crimes. Like that was yesterday when I said that, and then CNN released the tapes, and he said exactly those things. I want you to translate for us uh, when Jack Smith says uh, that they are going to pursue a speedy trial um, pursuant to all the rights that the accused has. What, what does that mean? How soon might this trial begin? Well, he obviously is aware that the Department of Justice has a policy they don't want to do anything that might interfere with an election. We know we are 500-some days away from the presidential election. And two months they, from the first and debate. And two months from the first debate. And, of course, primaries ahead of that and after that as well. He's aware of that. And the talking point is obviously out there. And he tried to undermine the idea of the adherence to the law as a bedrock principle and nothing else was actually the reason to do this. He's aware of that. And so with an eye towards that notion, he is trying to confirm to the people of the United States who are hearing him right now that they are going to do everything that they can. Now, that does not mean that the judge or everyone else in this case will do everything that they can to do this before any of those timelines. Because as you can imagine, if, for example, Donald Trump somehow secures the RNC nomination, and if he is able to become the president um, I haven't even, like, we've been celebrating this stuff, but I haven't talked about, like, why it's actually not great yet. Because, like, there is a little bit of a scary situation at play now. Because, like, the the whole, like, Donald Trump is being uh, attacked by the FBI could very quickly turn into, oh, he can't be a viable candidate any longer. He's literally a criminal. Um... I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I just, and if that's the case, like, then all of a sudden, DeSantis has, like, a much better chance. And um, that would be not great. The United States yet again and win over the Democratic incumbent, then that would mean that any period would actually toll at that point because now you can no longer continue to pursue a case against a sitting president based on DOJ guidelines. And so the speed and the timing will both be a friend and a foe of Jack Smith. And, and Andy McCabe, let me ask you, um, as a former FBI official, is it unusual that the Justice Department decided to release the indictment today? Do you want to know why DeSantis has the capacity in some cases to be worse than Trump? Trump will be worse from the bully pulpit. DeSantis would be worse from the legislative side. What do I mean by that? Because the unfortunate reality is you don't really need to garner popular support to be able to push legislation. You just need to be willing to do it. And you've seen what has happened uh, with many, many state legislatures all around the country basically acting on their own desires, not even necessarily for any kind of like uh, constituency that they care to appease or anything like that, as they have pushed forward some of the most like criminally 
uh, uh, discriminatory laws against trans people in every fucking state in the nation when there isn't even like a real interest in that. There's no single issue voter that's like, we need to kill trans people, please. Like, that's the only thing I care about. They're, they're Matt Walsh fans. That's it. Right? And Ron DeSantis has basically done that as governor in the state of Florida. So if he were in any kind of uh, position of power, I could totally see him. Um, I could totally see him uh, utilizing that exact same thing, but nationally through state legislatures across the board. Whereas Trump's more so in the game for his own thing. Bro, I saw what you said about Dr. Disrespect. Nagala is why no one likes you and you'll get smoked by anyone and everyone. Why didn't this guy molest a 14-year-old? If I get timed out, fuck the mods. What? Wait, didn't this guy molest a 14-year-old? If I get timed out, fuck the mods. And may you all die young. Bye. I'm unsubbing. Following since 10 minutes ago. You okay, man? You good? Take your medication, brother. Thanks for thanks for coming. They sort of posted a clip of you shitting on Dr. Disrespect. Yeah, I know. Um, of course they did. Because now I'll get fucking ass clapped by uh not only the Shungite lovers or whatever, but uh fucking Dick Cerdo, dude. God damn it. I hate I hate it. And if Continue. so, why do you think they did? Paris. Highly unusual. The normal order is the indictment remains sealed until the defendant is presented in court at the arraignment, which we know in That'll this case... That'll be Tuesday in Miami. That's yeah. right. Tuesday in Miami, about, about the same time we're at today. Um, so that's how it normally happens. I'm a little bit surprised that they released it early here, simply because I think it would have been in their advantage to be able to say, we follow the normal process with respect to this remarkable defendant in every possible instance. However, I think that DOJ capitulated in some, in some re, uh, respect to the enormous pressure that's been put on them by we in the media and some political figures saying, like, this thing is so volatile, people are so interested in it, the American people need to see these facts today. So that's what they did. But this press conference, very clearly, this was like a cover letter, right? There was no Why are we looking at these old clips? Bitch, it's from two hours ago. This is from, like, when... I started broadcasting. No substance here. <laughs> what Jack Smith wants us to do is read. I'll smoke all of you. Drop all your postcodes. Who the fuck says postcode? Chat. He means he's going to smoke on your poles. He's saying he's going to suck all of your dicks. Okay. Okay. Is he British? Is that what it is? Give you a fucking English. Uh, a willy sucking, yeah? What's your postcode, lad? Fucking hell. I'll smoke you. I'll fucking shank you. You give me your meat shanking. I'll smoke your fucking pole, lad. Read the indictment, and he started his comments by saying exactly that. We have one set of laws. Uh, protecting information for national security's sake is incredibly important, and read the indictment. And that's basically all you got. Dan Abash, um, a lot of the Republicans out there running for president against Donald Trump, with the exceptions of Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson, a lot of them running to Donald Trump's defense. Yeah. You know, and I literally just got a text from a uh, veteran Republican strategist not affiliated with any of the president. Hassan, you're low-key going to get shift. Drop it. Hassan, yes, I'm British. Hassan, drop it then. You're low-key going to get shift. Drop it. What the fuck does shift mean? He just keeps getting more British. The more I fucking make fun of him, the more he's turning British. The shift mean like he's going to shank you. I'll fucking shank you. Brother, I'm American. I don't know if you know this, but. I'll be fine, I think. I'm just saying. I got 
the fucking blunderbuss, yeah? You give fucking shank, lad. I pity you. Fuck the verbals. Who are you going to do chefing at, lad? You're doing a little chefing. All you're going to do is just the fucking kitchen, lad. Oh, fucking shank, yes. Wait, what's happening? Is that, is it too loud? You think you're tough with a gun? You get wiped, lad. True, threatening Americans with British knives is amazing. Yeah, I know. You're not a proper bird, bruv. Come to Tottenham. You won't be fucking speaking this loud, Wiz. I'll tell you. I'll fucking shank you. You come to Tottenham, you see. Don't talk like this. It's like there's a cricket in your mic. Wait, still? Is there... Is it still... Wait, what the fuck? What is happening? Someone clip it. Someone clip it. I don't know what it is. Why is the roadcaster making a random noise on its own? I'm just saying. I got the fucking blunderbuss, yeah? Wait. Oh, this is it. It's a roadcaster noise. That's so funny. I turned it off. No, it was not. It was not intentional. I was chefing up the fucking mic, lad. No, no, no. My keyboard interfered with the fucking roadcaster. It touched the fucking roadcaster, yeah? You just got fucking Havana Syndrome, lad. Fucking hell. Fucking hell, lad. Is he still in here? Keep on with your British accent. You're taking this for some cartoon ting. Ah. Fucking hell. You won't see that to my face, though, but I... You think you're a tough... You think you're tough with a gun? You'll get wiped, lad. Pussy is here. You fucking think so? You fucking think? It's fucking minging. You're having a fucking laugh with those verbals, Yeah. You're having a fucking laugh. Presidential campaign saying, if a candidate can't make an effective argument that this guy might very well be in jail, I don't know what they can do. Well, they probably won't. I mean, many of the candidates, I mean, even down to former Vice President Mike Pence, who you were speaking to just a couple of days ago, um, not wanting to talk about it, really going out of his way today to discuss, to not discuss the substance of this case, Pence is not quite in the Asa Hutchinson camp, uh, not quite in the maybe the Chris Sununu or the Chris Christie camp, but he is staking his campaign on this premise that Trump violated his oath uh, on January 6th and should not be president again. But he is reluctant, it seems, at this very moment, and that could change in the future, but right now is reluctant to weigh in on this case. A lot of these candidates, a lot of Republicans right now probably understand what the poll numbers have shown us over a long period of time, which is that, at the very least, it's probably about half of Republicans will, are willing to, or have been willing up until this point, to give Trump a pass on this case and on many others. Mm -hmm. Will that change based on this indictment? We don't know. But a lot of Republicans in the field right now are looking to see where the wind is blowing to determine where they go, and not enough time has passed as of right now. Jamie? I would just say beyond reluctant. I mean, we saw... Pence come out with his announcement and finally say these things. On the other hand, he also said he did not think charges should be pursued against Trump, yeah, right? No one should be above the law, but don't. Yeah, exactly. That's all you need to know. The only fucking person who has like a little bit of, no, um, like who has a marginal shot or the second person, you know what I mean? Behind Donald Trump immediately came out and defended Donald Trump. 
That's all you need to know about the Republican race right now, okay? That's it. Ron DeSantis got absolutely fucking cucked by Donald Trump. Don't do this. So let's let's talk a little bit about the substance, if we can, uh, John. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to uh, former Governor uh, Asa Hutchinson later in the show. He's actually calling for Donald Trump to drop out of the race because of this indictment. I mean, when you read the indictment, it's stunning. Mm -hmm. And it's entirely credible because it's based on contemporaneous notes, texts, photographs, and transcripts. And the detail in it is stunning and also important to note. When you craft an indictment, the lawyers can say this better than I do, you want to prove your case, probable cause to make the count. There's a lot in there. There's also a lot that's not in there. You don't have to put it all in there. Uh, and so what they put in there, Trump's conversation with his lawyers, text messages, testimony from Mar-a-Lago employees. Again, Donald Trump wants to make this about anything but him and the people around him. That, this is him and the people around him. I, I want to quickly talk about what we just heard from Jack Smith, though, because we've never heard his voice before. Mm -hmm. he, just, he took this job. And he is now bringing a historic case against a former president and a current frontrunner for the Republican nomination. That was an economy of words, but I think they were very important words. Uh, number one, he said Donald Trump put our country at risk. He's trying to break through uh, to all Americans, but especially the 33, 35, what's the number, percent of Americans who believe anything Donald Trump tells them. Donald Trump says this is a box's hope, this is casual, this is not a big deal. Uh, that was the special counsel saying Donald Trump put our country at risk, put the men and women in the military at risk, put the intelligence services at risk. And then yeah, dog, I don't know if you watch Fox News or not, John King, but let me tell you, they literally have already started talking about how John King is like insane. He's crazy. The Supreme Court overturned uh, one of his decisions. He's, uh, uh, you know, he's partisan. He's a partisan hack. He was brought in as a hatchet guy. Like, no, no American is looking at this and going, wow, well, how brilliant. Well, this guy seems like a good egg, you know, maybe, maybe he's, maybe he's right. No, this guy's name is John King. Uh, not, the, the fucking prosecutor is uh, Jack Smith. John King is, oh my God, this person right here on the fucking stage that I'm replying to In the end, when he defended the work of the FBI, that tells me he is very aware, even though his, his job is to prove this case in court, he understands the political argument underway right now. Donald Trump has attacked the FBI for months and months and months and months, but is forcefully doing so now. And a member of the House <clears throat> Republican Party, uh, Andy Biggs, says we are, we need to, this is the time for an eye for an eye and that we have reached a war phase. Um, January Let's go. Oh, dude, it'd be so sick. It would be so fucking sick if they were... Uh, coming after Joe Biden. January 6th is not too far in the rearview mirror. Yeah. Uh, and you have people who put their hand on a Bible or swear an oath to the Constitution who are now saying things, I'm sorry, Donald Trump, as the special counsel noted, is innocent until proven guilty. Absolutely. However, the words of elected officials, leader official, leadership officials, people in positions of authority and standing in our country are incredibly important always but all the more so at this moment. And you have these, yeah. you have Republican officials who even <clears throat> before they saw this indictment mm -hmm. said these charges were baseless. Uh, the special counsel, his test is in a court of law, but he was trying right there to shake people to say, at least please read the damn thing. Well, and also just, I mean, an obvious note, but Donald Trump was elected in 2016 in no small part because he was taking issue with uh, Hillary Clinton's treatment of classified documents right. on her email server. Uh, Lock Her Up was about her recklessness uh, with classified information, alleged recklessness. And, and to uh, your point about the details, you're, you're, you're making a great point, because look at the photographs in that. Right. right. They Lock Her Up because of the email server. Right. Hundreds of documents, maps, and they military use... information, nuclear information from a foreign country. And control in rooms. In control a room. Room. Show, show the one yeah. of, the, of all the documents spilled yeah. out uh, that have uh, the Five Eyes five labels. Eyes. Five Eyes yeah. is the uh, five. Yeah, throw Hillary Clinton in jail then. Like, I'm so on board. God, that would make it so much funnier if Hillary Clinton was also being investigated for document mismanagement. And then simultaneously, Joe Biden was also being investigated for, like, his son having a fat cock or whatever the fuck they're saying Joe Biden is doing with Hunter Biden. It would be sick. I am on board. Please do that. I have allies, the United States, Australia, New Zealand. You think uh, I give a and fuck? Others, you can. Go ahead. Make uh, my day. And, and these are documents that are only accessible, only allowable 
uh, to be seen by people in the intelligence community in these five countries. And and there's a there's a photograph. God, I love this. Sure this is such a funny. Fu